and if you ask me when i took the decision of becoming an actor i i honestly don't know and that is where i have been extremely lucky that my parents are amazing people no one has signed a contract paper at the end of the day they are very happy because they're doing the work they wanted to do and i am really grateful to all my friends whom i have named and my family Hi, my name is Vidhi Sen, and I'm delighted to be a part of Smart Power Talks IEM Solfe for giving me this opportunity to share my experiences with all of you. So, to begin with, uh, we all know that we are go we are amidst a pandemic right now, and that is certainly a time where all of us are trying really hard to be hopeful, to feel hopeful, but it's becoming very difficult, increasingly difficult. Uh, I know about my friends and many people. including myself who are going through a lot of troubles and a lot of depression i must say specifically because of the confinement uh, of course it's just not about home confinement or isolation but whenever we are going out we have a mask on our faces we have to sanitize our hands constantly and that is quite against our usual routine the routine which all of us have been following for so many years so we are no getting to know a new world altogether right now and almost as if we were babies we are back to a childhood where we are learning to do things uh, for the very first time and that is exactly something i feel inspires me a lot and uh, that's the most unique part of life about not knowing what's going to happen next life is dangerous and beautiful because of one particular reason that we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or we don't even know what's going to happen just in the next couple of hours and that unpredictability somehow keeps on pushing us and uh, that unpredictability gives us a sense of time a sense of urgency to know ourselves better to do things which we actually want to do but it's it's maybe it, it is maybe a little scary that uh, this sense of unpredictability or this sense of because it's very interesting that woody allen uh, the famous filmmaker woody allen once said that uh, he defined Shakespeare's famous Macbeth's soliloquy that life is but a walking shadow of poor player who struts and frets his hour upon the stage but signifies nothing and it's kind of true that we do so much we do so many things but we all are going to die at the end of the day sooner or later and that thought is kind of scary that the thought of everything this joy ride is not going to go on forever one day the giant wheel is going to come to an end and we all have to we will be all put out like brief candles so that is something i feel it instead of this feeling of not being able to go on forever instead of that being scary it is somehow very hopeful i feel because because when you know that you have very little time in your hand and this unpredictability that every day you are like a baby learning new things so that somehow gives you a lot of hope even in a very hopeless situation and that is what works for me i personally felt that i have never made a plan in my life so i don't believe in making plans of course you can make plans we all make plans but those plans are useless who knew, who knew that like till february we were living life the way we used to but who knew that a pandemic is going to come and turn everything over so recently in a film uh, i think a lot of many of us have seen this film called parasite uh, where uh, bong joon ho won the best film and best director for parasite so in that film there's a famous dialogue uh, where the father tells his son that you know the, you know what's the best plan the best plan is to make no plan at all so that is beautiful in a way because as human beings all we need to do is to keep the child inside us alive and by child i or by innocence i don't mean that you don't know i mean innocence is a very relative word so by innocence i mean innocence of discovery so the day we stop our innocence of discovering something new that day we are dead as human beings so i'll trace back to my childhood uh, because i don't i honestly feel that i am not an inspiration because the word inspiration really varies from person to person and i honestly think that uh, i am not somebody who can inspire a lot of people but all i can do is i can share few of my thoughts which can out of which few of my words might just help you guys think or question and that is exactly what 
I want. It's rather than uh, the word inspiration. I I want after listening to this, if few of you question yourselves or question your friends or question your family, that's that's what matters at the end of the day. We need to keep questioning each other, and that's how we're going to move forward. So I'm not eligible or worthy of inspiration yet, but uh, I can share few of my stories. And uh, though I don't have much to share, but as a kid, uh, I can tell you that uh, from when I was three, three and a half, so. I went up on the stage uh, when I was three and a half. So that's when I did my first play, and it was by a famous uh, Bangladeshi author called Selim Aldin, and it was his play, and it was directed by my father. And a lot of people were confused that whether to because I was three and a half four year old kid, so people were a little in confident that whether I will be able to pull it off on stage. But my parents were super confident. They were like, "No, you just got to do it." and for me as far as i remember that going up on the stage each evening was like a play time for me so the stage was a playground and my mother tells me that whenever we saw you on stage we felt so relieved that it seemed that you're on your playground you don't have any worries you're just enjoying your heart out and if you ask me when i want when i took the decision of becoming an actor i i honestly don't know because as i told you i never planned it but all i knew is that i don't know what else to do and that is a feeling it might sound a little exaggerated or a little over the top but trust me on this from that very tender age i knew that this is what i want to do i didn't have any other option uh, because i didn't want to have any other option that's very important because right now when this debate of nepotism and uh, favoritism is going on and a lot of masks are being uncovered uh, and it was a long uh, it, uh, the, the, the the debate on nepotism and favoritism is very important and it is coming out and i'm so happy that a lot of masks are opening up and a lot of people are getting exposed but in this case uh, we all know that i belong from a family of actors but that was not the reason why i wanted to be an actor to be very honest because first of all our industry the bengal film industry is not as big as the hindi film industry here uh, nepotism or favoritism doesn't really work that way and especially in this time when we are working for both the industries i feel that favoritism or nepotism is, are present very much present and that needs to stop but at the same time we have seen that a lot of families has tried to establish their own uh, kids uh, as in the fi- in the film industry and they are terrible failures and that is sad also because when you have a pressure of your family who is well known so you need to break that image and you have to come out right so you need to know that uh, uh, just the way it is difficult for newcomers who are coming to the industry their struggle i salute their struggle every day So that is a struggle which is unimaginable which they are doing every day. But at the same time, when you belong from a known family, you know that you have to, you will be compared constantly, continuously with your family. So that is also an additional pressure. So, uh, but for me, none of these mattered. It matters still. It doesn't matter because for me, I really, really enjoy this craft so much that I can't see anything beyond that thing. So right from the age of three and a half, all I wanted to do was to act and play different characters because that. is something which made me feel myself being in someone else's shoe as while playing a character i felt myself more than ever so i was extremely lucky and i am extremely lucky for one and one reason because of my parents because the most important thing in the entire world if you ask me it is the word family because and by family i don't mean just those people who are connected to you by blood your friends can be your family a stranger you meet uh, you met yesterday on the streets can be your family uh, a band can be a family someone who plays music together so the word family varies from person to person but family is very important whoever that person is and for me if i am extremely extremely privileged that i belong from a family who gave me an education which i'm quite sure none of the schools could have given me but i'm grateful to my school south point high school because my teachers and my fellow friends uh, they have always encouraged me uh, because they all knew that i loved acting and for that my teachers really appreciated that and i never had any trouble in school to manage uh, my theater and studies uh, simultaneously but again the education uh, i always feel the education we all need is primarily from our family so the first 10 years of our experience that's all what matters in life and to be very honest people who doesn't get those first 10 years of experience from their family a lot of people has families who are not supportive so what do you do 
then turn to your friends that's what i said that the word family is quite relative so you turn to your friends and you seek the solace in your friends who becomes your family eventually and i've been lucky everywhere in both the sectors till now that i have some amazing friends and some amazing and an, and an amazing family who help me realize who i am and what i want to be so when i was young so in my growing up years i'm still growing up and we are always going to grow up but i'm talking about my childhood before and my teenage so there my parents never actually uh, they have never hidden anything from me and that is something i feel which is extremely important in a world full of internet in a world where the flow of information is addictive and it's constantly coming we don't know what to censor and what not to censor so my parents never censored anything from me instead they explained that why this is bad and why this is good so rather than not if you ask a child to not go and see that film a child is always going to go and see that because you're telling that person to not do that so that is our nature right so that's what is beautiful about my parents that i saw my first a certified film when i was 9 years old so they made a special permission for me in inox and uh, the film was farzania nasiruddin shah's and it was a wonderful wonderful film it's one of the best films i've ever seen and then my parents explained me that this is a certified but everything which is a certified is not bad so then i started having an understanding what is bad and what is the difference between good and bad and also in our indian society the word sex is a taboo so often we hide this word sex often we don't see our parents if our parents come and hug each other or they kiss each other they a lot of people a lot of parents they don't do this in front of their children but that what's so abnormal about that and that is why a child needs to know what is physical affection what is the meaning of uh, a parents if your parents are hugging each other so that's not a bad thing at the end of the day so right now in our society we have often seen that disrespecting women and taking advantage in of women in workplaces and uh, this uh, entire thing about pay scale that a man has to get paid more than a woman and this entire uh, uh, disgusting concept of patriarchy this gets inside us right from when we are when we are 5 or 6 year old because that's what we see around us right we also see that how our mothers or how our uh, grandmoms are getting treated inside the house so it's very important see the basis of education starts from your family how you're going to grow up to be a person that has to be taught in your own family and that is why it's very important to not conceal anything in front of your kids rather explain it to them and that is where i have been extremely lucky that my parents are amazing people so they have given me an ambience where i can learn so rather than telling me what to do most of the times they have created an atmosphere where i can pick things up and i can come back and question that why this why that so they have never imposed their own philosophy inside me but they have created an atmosphere where i can make my own philosophy and that is very important and that is extremely difficult how do you maintain that balance of not imposing your own thoughts at the same time you have to understand to put give them a demarcation line that you shouldn't cross this so that balance my parents have amazingly uh, strike that balance and after my class 10 the most important decision in my life because of which i'm sitting here today and talking to all of you is that after my 10th standard my parents realized especially my mother that acting is a subject that is something which we often don't realize in india especially because in uh, most of the first world countries uh, if a child is good at something the school takes the responsibility uh, if somebody is good at singing so the school takes a responsibility reduces few subjects and makes sure that this child gets to focus on his or her singing more so that he or she can take this up as a profession so my parents so getting a 100 out of 100 in physics or a 100 out of 100 in maths was never my parents concern my parents concern was you just keep your education going and you don't have to bring like like you have to you don't have to score like a huge number huge sum and i was terrible in the science segment and i was terrible in maths Uh, terrible in uh, physics or chemistry but i was very good in literature history geography that's the entire sector where i was interested in so that's why out of my school syllabus my parents used to give me tons of books and expose me to some really good cinema and theater and music which was also my education which was going on with my school education and that education is something which is why i am talking to you today because that education is really 
any session, something which is out of syllabus, where you are reading and educating yourself, not for getting marks, but for growing as a human being. So, of course, I've got few teachers who has made me feel like this in school. And later on, I have been exposed to a uh, few directors with whom I've worked with, my friends, Rito uh, Brata Mukherjee, Shurangana Vandavadhyay, Rajur Shinag, and a lot of my friends, uh, Orko Nil Bhomik, so because of whom I have really, really, uh, I have lo I've got a chance to educate myself more. Because they are my teachers as well. And so coming back, that in my 10th standard, my parents, especially my mother, thought that I need to give more time in practicing my craft. And acting is just not acting. It's just not a, a reverie of emotions, but you need to learn acting. It's a craft. It can be taught. That's why we don't have any acting schools in India. And that's extremely sad. So my parents thought that acting is a subject. And I also believe that acting is a subject. You need to invest time in learning this. As much as time you invest in learning literature or physics. So acting is just like literature or physics. You need to give some time to learn it. So my parents decided that I should shift to private. Uh, my 11th and 12th I have uh, studied in private. And I've given my exams in private. And I, they have given me that time so that I can practice my craft more. And that is exactly why if they wouldn't have taken that decision, then I'm sure that I wouldn't have ended up uh, winning a national award. Because if I didn't get that amount of time to practice my craft, I couldn't have done all the films which I have done today. And then I slowly realized that, again, another step, I told you that not making a plan is so important, that you can't make a plan. So that was not my plan. And that started happening. Just the way I've done a lot of Hindi films is along with my, along with Bengali films. So people keep on asking me that, do you want to shift to the Hindi film industry? I said, no, I, it's not something I have consciously done. I just wanted to be a part of good cinema. So a good cinema can be in Odia, a good cinema can be in Telugu, a good cinema can be in French, a good cinema can be in Hindi. So the language doesn't matter to me. The language of cinema matters to me. So I didn't plan that I'm going to do Hindi films. I didn't plan that I'm going to do Bengali films. I only wanted to do films. I wanted to act on stage, on a web platform, or in front of uh, a 70 mm screen, in front of a camera. So that's how, similarly, it was not my plan that I never knew that I'm going to study in private in the 11th and 12th. But I'm grateful to my mother that there was a very brave decision. A lot of people went against this decision. A lot of people told my parents that this is not the right thing you're doing for your, for your child and how, I, how can you just take him away from the conventional education system. But those people ended up congratulating me and my parents and <laughs> told them that how proud we are of Riddhi after I won the national award. So that is the thing that at the end of the day, you have to make your own decision. No one is going to come and take the decision for your life. And life is extremely short. You don't know whether you're going to stay alive. In this pandemic, we have lost Irfan Khan. We have lost Sushant Singh Rajput. We have lost Rishi Kapoor. We have lost so many souls because of COVID-19. So none of them knew that tomorrow is their last day. So no one has signed a contract paper that we are going to live till 30, we are going to live till 90. So any moment can be a last moment. So it's really immaterial that whoever is coming and telling you you should do this, you should do that. This is not the right decision you're taking. Follow your heart. Do what you want to do. Uh, Steve Jobs said a beautiful thing in one of his commencements that he actually dropped out of college. He didn't do his graduation because he wanted to do a short course in graphology. And if he wouldn't have done graphology, he would have never invented the Mac software. And he didn't know that he was doing it consciously. He just followed his heart. And now after 30 years or 40 years, when he turned back, he saw that the dots were already joined in his life. So don't waste your time in joining the dots and making a map. Just follow the path you want to. And when you look back after 15 years, you might, be, you might not be successful in the eyes of the society, but you will be happy for yourself. And that is very important because the society keeps on feeding us with this nonsense idea of success. That be successful. Success means money. Success means buying a big car. Success means buying a big house. Success means uh, uh, having many properties. Success means you can afford to not work for six months because you have saved that amount of money. But if you look up the English dictionary, success has a very simple meaning. Achieving your desired aim. So success doesn't mean limelight or money. Success in the dictionary means, search it up, that achieving your desired aim. So it really doesn't matter what is success in front of the eyes of the society. Successful is having a life where you have done what you wanted to do. So 
that's exactly the idea which was implanted inside me because of my parents because i have seen how they were dealing with failure i have seen them going through terrible times and i have seen one of the most beautiful things in their 25 years of marriage they have it was not their idea to term 25 years of marriage as just like okay for the sake of we are completing 25 years so they are genuine friends and that is uh, that is something which is beautiful when they end up having a fight they don't hide it not just in front of me in front of my parents or in front of my friends they don't hide that they are having a fight because they are human beings so that's something i've learned that they are not just your parents they have another role to play they are two human beings also apart from just being your parents and they can exactly have those emotions which you have so that is something they have never concealed in front of me and that is something where i have learned a great deal that how they are handling failure and that is something which i have seen very closely uh, when it comes to my parents i honestly feel they didn't get the due still which they deserve but still i have never seen them getting frustrated i have never seen them their failure at, in certain uh, parts bringing them down because at the end of the day they are very happy because they're doing the work they wanted to do so that's why you have to fix the meaning of success at the end of the day what you mean by success don't go by the society's idea of success and then after when i started doing films uh, and i came away from the conventional education system so that's when i realized my real education started and every film i have done is like my college first year second year third year so i was doing my graduations in cinema literally no. so when i finished a film and uh, suppose i have done uh, my first film was kahani and then my second film was uh, children of war that's a movie very few people have seen so i have done many movies which a lot of people has not seen like choranga like parched is seen by few people but i am very sad that a lot of people didn't get to, didn't get to see children of war or choranga so every time i finished a film it was like my i completed my first year so when i did parched i completed my second year when i did nagar gita that was supposed my masters in acting so uh, that is something every interacting with every filmmaker and interacting with so many people in the crew that is some a place where i've learned the real meaning of education and i'm still learning that and that is why i won't fix the meaning of education because the meaning of education is going to change for me in the coming 10 years if i'm alive then of course it's going to change and it will keep on changing so i don't want to get fixated by just one institution so that's so rather than sharing my journey or how i have prepared for characters or how what why i have chosen films these are something you can always read up in an interview or it's available but what is very important that is my philosophy behind it because today at the end of the day we have often realized that our generation often ends up going through a lot of stress from your from a family that you have to match up to their expectations from the society competitive society there, are, there there's a lot of stress continuously so there i really feel the only salvation is you have your own philosophy and that is the only thing which is going to save you at the end of the day find your own philosophy because often the word philosophy is something we think like oh my god it's such a heavy word i'll end up sleeping in a philosophy class i'm not talking about that philosophy but i'm talking about robert frost's poem where he has beautifully written two roads diverged in the wood and i chose the road less taken so that's the philosophy i'm talking about so create your own philosophy which will help you move on in life and which will keep make you re- give this sense that you should and and i think honestly what is how do you realize that you have been successful i think success really lies in the choice of people the people you have chosen who will go on this journey with you so ha- i think that is that is the real meaning of success for me to choose the right people for a journey which is going to end very soon sooner or later it might sound morbid but it is going to but when you really have this idea when i saw my grandfather in 2017 that was a turning point in my life when i saw my grandfather uh, passed away in 2017 and he was extremely close to me uh, unbelievably close to me and that's the first time i visited uh, uh, shoshan shoshan ghat and i saw the body burning up I, i saw the rituals and there you really feel empty you really feel hollow seeing somebody very close to you pass away and then you really realize that time is so important and you will stop uh, perhaps scribbling about the small things you used to crib about then you realize that just waking up every morning and getting to see another day that is itself 
the best gift you can get in life just to see another day just to see another same mundane and boring day once you really get this sense of time i often feel that people don't get bored anymore then you realize that life is so beautiful life is so small and so short lived even boredom is beautiful there and that is something which keeps on helping me as an actor keeps on helping me as an artist keeps on helping me as a human being and i am really grateful to all my friends whom i have named and my family who have given me this space to be myself and so with this i'm going to end today uh, and really thank you for giving me this platform and uh, yes so hopefully this has helped all of you and please come up with your own stories and share this with your friends and make sure people are listening that's very important thank you